it's time to cancel this dude. He only cares about himself. He doesn't do anything for the community or the culture, not entertainment, but our people. And anything that he does do, it comes with a really crazy motive. In this video, we're going to discuss why this dude is not good for our people. In my opinion, everything's alleged, allegedly. And um, yeah, let's get into it. I want to speak about when I first saw this dude. It was in 2020 and stuff started popping up about his um city councils council stuff so i started looking into it like okay that's what's up he's wild but he's taking a fight where it needs to be and our people will rather ruin their city or town or put miles on our feet just walking with signs and chanting rather than going to city hall city council to state buildings city buildings like how it should be done so i admired him for that hustle but as time went on and something happened to mo3 he popped back out and i'm just like okay wow this dude is crazy disrespectful he went in on Mo3 so crazy and this man was not here then Vaughn that happened this dude went so crazy on Vaughn and it's just like bro how do you find the audacity within to talk about this man like that that's no longer here no matter what the reason is this dude has kids families and all of that stuff why mr white i will remind you that this is a civil body and if your language is inappropriate you will be removed from the chamber well i'm not a civil man <laughs> this country once sold my ancestors so civility is something that black people typically don't get exposed to in this country but I do understand the Constitution, so I do come in uncivil behavior. Say, brother, uh, where he go? The brother, I, you right here in the blue shirt, man, I love you. But I want to remind you guys that there's somewhere in the Bible that it was God who hardened the heart of Pharaoh. And you guys kind of represent Pharaoh in, in, in modern day times. And when I look at you guys and I see these good people come out and talk with their children, I don't see you guys show any compassion. Kerry Moon is probably about the only one who I really see any God-like spirit when I sit back and I just look from the outside. But I want to remind some of these white people, they got some black people coming to y'all neighborhood. Charleston. And they got some diseases. They Charleston. got syphilis, chlamydia, gonorrhea. They got some good, they got some good people. Charleston, you'll be removed. Tonight, we will close tonight's council. Time goes on and we see um, him and the parents, the mothers of slain rappers, him and one of the biggest snakes of Dallas, the biggest snake of Dallas, came up with some grand, grand scheme to start a podcast with these women built off their hurt. Some of these women have never shown their faces. So the one time they feel somebody's dear to what they say, 
backing them up in their situations and just trying to help, they get screwed over. The things he said about Vaughn's mom, he went in on Tuka's mom, every mom in that group, Mama Duck, he went in on every woman in that group. And it's crazy because they were trying to make a buck off their pain. He offered to help some women. They had to hear about that. They were all type of dirty bees, garden tools, and everything else. And the sick part about it, you guys, is we stuck by, well, some people stuck by him and rode with him through that. When he's dis he's disrespected our women, our women wasn't living that life. Their children were. What seed was planted in his head to feel like that was okay? And the viewers, why was it okay for you guys to watch that? At what cost is entertainment too expensive? How down bad are we to where we just sit here and watch somebody so toxic to the culture? For the culture. We've made this dude a spokesman slash representative of us. And look at him. That's why I say he needs to be canceled. Anyway, moving forward. Broke those emotions where she started crying. So uh, I, I see, yeah, it never goes away. You don't know when it's going to hit you. you never know. Yeah. It feel it, like today I, yeah. I was at work and it was two dates of somebody's bill. And one of the dates was Snoop's birthday. And one of the dates was the day of his funeral. Wow. So alone, that right there. He was there. Had that me was to just breathe, you know, and just have that moment. So they come periodically throughout yeah. your day. So they're just you just never know. Because when Charleston was telling me he was gone, he was like, well, where, where, where can you come, Mama Duck? How the fuck you gonna speak on a nigga that gave out of the kindness and never asked for nothing in return? Fucking dirty leg, no good, rotten, scum of the earth ass bitches! You know, listen, bitch, you know how you so, you know how you hold this fucked up? Bitch, y'all got dead children, and y'all still cursed. He talked about Mo3, went crazy on him, links up with Yellow Beezy on Say Cheese, rides Beezy's wave. Something happened when it, then they split, like as far as like go their separate ways from the interview. Next thing you know, he does his patented switcheroo. He threw down a reverse card and made him draw four. This dude talked about Beezy so bad and then flipped to Team Mo3. How many times do we watch this dude just lie to us in our faces? The, hip the hypocrisy is crazy. But we just want to be entertained. And it's sad, y'all. This dude is tearing down our culture worse than the most gangsterous rapper. It's people that really think his logic of his logic is fine. It's people that feel just like he does. But to support somebody that plays on our tops time and time again, when does it stop? I'm gonna come out the closet. That's Mo right there, y'all. That's Melvin. That's little Melvin right there. Oh, that's little Melvin. Oh, oh, oh. I'm out the closet. Oh, I'm gonna come out the closet for Mo3, man. Oh, oh. Mo3 is not from Dallas. They be That nigga is from the suburbs out there in McKinney with the white folk. That's why he was hating so hard on trap them, because they really from the clip. Man, I'm gonna tell the truth, and I ain't gonna tell no lie, my nigga. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna tell, and, and, and I'm finna stir up some more feeling. Nigga, every morning I rolled by Mo3 Death Spot and, and laughed at him, playing his music. I was in a red truck. I told a story about nigga when the, my truck my truck broke down over in the clip where he got killed at. Nigga, I rolled by every, yeah, every morning I rolled by going live on YouTube laughing at Mo3 getting killed. Yeah, you a whole ass nigga, boy. I'm telling you, all you got to do is just lay and play with these niggas long enough and their true colors go come out. 
they true color go come out. He's showing his hair. Uh, cause this ain't my hair. Yeah, this ain't my hair. Yeah, yeah, ain't nobody go come her. Everybody know Rob B right here. So I show this house every day. One thing you know about her, your mama come up dead. You come bother anybody over her. Yeah, yeah, so here's the thing. So Rain ain't got nothing going on. When you look at Rain, well, he ain't got nothing going on. Nigga, I see why Mo3 dead, nigga, and he deserved to die. I'm gonna say it again, bitch ass nigga. I see why Mo3 dead and he deserved to die. Nigga, Mo was scared to come outside. Tell him that, nigga. Tell him that little old bitty nigga talking tough. He wasn't as tough as me, nigga. Mo was scared to come outside, nigga. Nigga wasn't in no club, nigga. But I be, I be everywhere, nigga. Mo3 wasn't scare ass motherfucker. Nigga, Mo3 was scaring the bitch. Nigga did all that goddamn talking on wax and in the studio, nigga, but he wasn't outside talking like me. None of his video was outside, nigga. Scared rad little bitty nigga. You a scary bitch too, Rainwater. It fucked Mo 3 on mine. Yeah, it's fuck Mo3 on mine, nigga, and I be in Dallas, Fort Worth, all over this motherfucker, nigga. And I lay any one of you Mo3 loving ass niggas down, bitch ass nigga. Y'all ain't do nothing about him getting killed, nigga. Yeah, yeah, I'm strategizing war. <laughs> yeah, you just said nigga gotta go to war, man. They think Mo3 was something. Nah, nigga, they think, they think Mo3 was something. Nigga, Mo3, nigga, Mo3 ain't got shit. I'm 50 man, please. They thought Mo3 had to have running skid. Yeah, they just started coming outside to Mo3 die. Yeah, these niggas just started coming outside. I'm been outside. He puts that nigga wanna try to play tough now that Mo3 did. Nigga, I'm way worse than Mo3. Yeah, yeah, nah, nigga, I'm way worse than Mo3. What really made me make this video, you guys, was the YSL or Lil Woody situ Woody situation in Charleston. I knew what it was going to be when I seen him on 20 versus one, when I seen him kicking it behind the scenes and all that, it was just a matter of time. And what he has his live to where he's discussing how he, no, it was a interview with no jumper. He's discussing how he's not too fond of Charleston talking about the rumors or speculations around Woody's names of being a hitter. Because that whole thing is still open. But it's like, bro, you got on an interview with Orlando Brown and somebody else tried to downplay this dude, not knowing you're already out. Orlando is a thinker. He's a plotter. He outthought Charleston. Charleston didn't know that because he's just so big on oh, this dude stupid he high he this he that anyway uh charleston was talking down on him so orlando said man come on daddy you the one that um got this net in your sleep or in a barber chair and this and that this and that charleston has the nerves to say come on man no no yeah no no man i mean we ain't gonna talk about that man that's an open case man how many open cases has this dude talked about with other people but when it's him, it's a problem. But like they say, it ain't no fun when a rabbit got the gun. It's cool, but I don't want people to walk into uh, the barber nigga, shop. Uh, slap my America. Uh, that shit. I was gonna beat that up. I, I, I went to jail for killing the white man when I was a kid. So and whatever, you do cops and so, all kinds so, of so, shit. So, so yeah, whatever. So yeah, whatever I got yeah. to deal with, I can deal and with. And that ass got the. He got, he hey, got, he got hey, the, listen, he got hey, the listen, brain. Hey, listen. I'm out on bond. Can you leave that case alone? That's an open case. I'm out on yeah. two felony bonds. Can you please quit talking about that? I'm out on bond. Can you leave that case alone? That's an open case. I'm out on yeah. two felony bonds. Can you please quit talking about that? So now he's speaking on his dude, Woody, and he tried to lure Woody to um, Fort Worth or Dallas in the, in like, telling Woody that they're going to meet with family, just chill, hang out. This dude had interviews lined up and he tried to get Woody to come do stuff for free. Something that Charleston wouldn't do. So when Woody didn't go for it and he called him out, 
respectfully, when Woody got back to um, Atlanta, Charleston's gone. He's gone. But I knew he was going to do it. I just didn't know he would go this far as to try to get this dude locked up on a probation violation. He said that Woody was trying to get straps in Dallas. But if you go on the internet and lie and bash people, they've been good to you, bro. You ain't right, bro. You ain't get that hatred out your heart. You a jealous little man. Grow up. Go put some bigger shoes on or something, bro. For real, for real, bro. Ain't nobody misleading me. You just thought you, you wanted me by myself because you thought it was going to be easy to manipulate me. And how, oh, boy, I play stupid. I play stupid. And you really, you really living like that? I don't think this is internet stuff. Well, you really own that type of time. Man, come on, bro. Yeah, I brought you around my child, nigga. You caught me, I pull right up. You want me to come out there in Texas where people don't hit you across the head with fire. Ain't nobody in the land getting none of me, so I can move around like I move around. But you can't even move around like that in your own state. And you want me to, you want me to come up there by myself. This dude doesn't even move around like that in Atlanta after everything that happened. So why would he need to in Dallas? The people in Atlanta ain't going at him crazy. Why would they in Dallas? The toxicity that comes with this guy, y'all, it's rubbing off on you if you watch him. The subconscious is a powerful thing. It's time to let him go. Point blank, period. But... The YSL Woody thing was the main reason I made this video. I'm tired of dude. I'm fed up. We should be fed up as a culture. Anyway, if you feel like I feel, let me know in the comments. Let me know where you're from. Like the video. I'm out. Peace.